Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our second Zoom presentation for the, the Nurse NCAA Flight Football uh, Group. Uh, this week, Brian Stelzer is going to take us uh, on a little, little run through with a, a video and a greater stake on film review. So, Brian, it's all yours. Wonderful. Thanks, Nick. Um, so the way I'm going to look at this um, is twofold. Um, I'm, I'm going to go through kind of some ground rules for today, uh, as well as I'm actually going to pull up film that I grade, um, as most of you should have no trouble doing because you're all video muted as it is now. Um, we will mute the, the video for everybody so it streams a little bit better um, when it comes to that section of the, of the presentation. Um, so <clears throat> Uh, again, once again, uh, I'm Brian Stelzer. Uh, I'm a referee in the MIAA. Um, this is my dog, Kona. Um, I, and I grade the uh, Great Plains Athletic Conference uh, in, for the, uh, NAIA. Um, been doing that for uh, about three years now, um, and it's been a really good experience. So I would encourage any of you, kind of a quick plug here, if you ever have the opportunity to be a grader, I would suggest you take it. Even if that's for high school level, um, it's going to make you that much better as a crewmate, um, as a as a leader on your crew, uh, because you, it requires you to know all the different positions. So, um, shameless plug there uh, for for that piece. Uh, so, the game plan for at least the first part of this is to talk through um, the grading system. What does that actually mean? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about write ups. Um, what I'm looking for as a grader, and it's I found that to be relatively universal for what um, other graders are also looking for, namely some do's and don'ts. Um, we're going to talk about breaking down film and self-evaluation. Uh, and from that piece, it'll be in the film actually looking at some game film from the GPAC, um, as well as some foul reports. So I have both of those pulled. Uh, names are removed so that uh, we're not going to embarrass anybody, but um, there's only a handful of people that actually know those GPAC officials. So um, the other caveat that I will have to this, um, if you are not familiar with Quick Ref or if you're not using some other grading system, I am operating under that assumption that all of us are using some sort of grading system, even if it's just sending you, your uh, grader a spreadsheet or your supervisor a spreadsheet at the end of the day um, saying, here's what we called, uh, and then they can provide you feedback that way. Whatever, whatever it is that's important to this, this whole presentation. Um, <clears throat> so really the meat of this, and one of the things I really wanna make sure that as a grader that we all take away is we shouldn't be stuck on what the grade says. Um, inc like incorrects are going to, or might happen, and marginal calls may happen. I mean, that's part of it. We need to learn what our foul thresholds are for our supervisors and for ourselves. Um, being okay with no calls is where it really, really comes in. Um, we know that those are going to happen during the game, and it may be anything from, you know, I saw it and I passed on it, and now I know what my grader wants, or I didn't see that, and what, how am I going to fix that so I do see it next time? I may still not call that as a foul because it's not my threshold, but I need to know that I can see it. Um, so the key point of that is remember this is entirely for learning purposes. Regardless of your level, I think that, that holds true is you're learning what the bosses want. You're learning what you're, where you should be looking um, because the grades should all be a part of that. And so don't focus so much on the, oh, I got a marginal or, oh, I got an incorrect. Think of it as, as this is a, a, a helpful nudge in the right direction. Think of it as coaching and it'll be, be that much better. Um, the other piece of that too, uh, graders or people too, we are willing to talk to you. Um, I haven't had too terribly many people reach out to me as a, as a grader, which I think um, is a disservice if you're for yourself. If you are actually wondering what we're thinking, give us a call. Um, some referees or some conference supervisors have their own philosophy on who should or could to reach out to those graders um, in most cases. I'll, they'll share that with you to the start of the season. Uh, in our case, um, if it's if it's something you just want to get some feedback, especially if it's uh, like uh, your grader, you know, is a is a deep wing and you're a deep wing and you want to talk, um, maybe get even build a mentor relationship. Um, do that. Absolutely. Reach out to those to, to them. Talk, talk through things. Uh, if all you want to do is complain about the grade you got, don't do that. Like that's again, getting stuck on the grade is not what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're um, learning from this. And so if you want to have that conversation and not try to convince the grader that, you know, you were right and they're wrong, then, um, then absolutely reach out to us. That's what we want to do. Um, from the write-ups perspective, um, 
many of us uh, have kind of learned this as we go along. I think that's why I wanted to talk about this uh, as part of a presentation. Um, when it comes to what we put on paper, uh, it's really important for me as a grader to, to understand what you saw and what you were thinking. Um, as a general principle, less is more. So if you try to make a paragraph of, you know, I, I saw the, during, during the pa past, the def defender grabbed the right arm of the offense, restricting him a little bit, and then moving to, uh, you're, you, if you start going down that road, you're going to end up having too much there. Um, so avoid that because it really makes it sound like you don't really know what you saw and you didn't take the time to process it. By the time you process it, throw your flag and then get to your file description, you should have a pretty good working idea of what you saw in the field and being able to put it in the words. Um, also that, be careful with how you write it up. Um, if you put, as I have in there, grab the right shoulder and spun the, uh, the, uh, the, the defender, um, causing him to lose a step, I better see all of those things as the grader. If you put that much detail in there, I need to be able to see it. Um, good on you if you if that's how it worked but at the same time you know be cautious when you when you want to be that level of detail um because i'm going to look for that and sometimes especially at my level where we have the sideline view and the end zone view we don't have that good of film quality especially depending on the school you're at sometimes you lose entire corners or sections of uh of uh of the film and so i might not see any of the sideline um, I talked with this about with Nick about does the uh, for replay and so and even in the Mac it's like does the play stand well we don't have the uh, the sideline view from that side so if it's opposite press box play is probably going to stand same idea from for a grader um, we we only have so many angles and so we're only going to be able to do so much um, I would encourage you if you are writing your things up and you have a file that has a category like holding like defensive pass interference use that in your dis file description. Um, so if your foul is de defensive pass interference for early contact, not playing the ball, I would expect to see some part of early contact, not playing the ball in your field, in your description. I don't want just the category. I mean, that's technically correct, but I would like to see a little bit more than that um, because I think we also default to losing too much. Um, so uh, the other piece, uh, as we will figure out from many our many discussions here with the NURSA group, using the rules to your advantage can also help you with your write-ups. Um, so know the definitions, know what makes something a foul. The example I go to the most is usually with false start, um, because a lot of us will say he moved prior to the snap. Technically, that's accurate, but it's not against the rules to move before the snap. It's against the rules to simulate the snap. So adding something along the lines of, Tackle number 75, move, simulating the snap. Good enough. If he just moves, maybe he's just doing a quick point out at somebody, then I then it's like, eh, you're, at, you're giving me that opportunity as a grader to go, mm, that's not quite what quite a, a foul. Or maybe it's a somebody goes in motion and I'm like, yeah, that's that's not a false start. That that's him legitimately going in motion. So again, know the rules, use those in your definition, keep it brief, um, but using those can really help you as as like. Again, not focusing on the grade, but being able to say, I know the rules, here's the way it should be. Um, know what you saw. Uh, so when you make the call, be able to fully describe it, um, whether that's in the locker room afterwards or in the moments afterwards, taking some notes at, on the field. Um, far too few officials will write down your fouls and your, and your foul descriptions. Um, like I said, my dog was going to make a caveat. Um, so if you write it down in the moment, it'll be that, that much easier. So at the very minimum, I would expect you to be writing down the time, the foul you called, and then a very brief something. So like for, if, if you have OH, I would have, you know, first quarter, 10, 13, OH, TD. That way I remember jog my, not my memory. When I say I had an offensive hold takedown by the right tackle. And I know what's going to happen. And I, and I can replay that in my mind a little better if I've written it down. Um, I know our boss is, with, when, he, when he comes to observe, if you don't pull your card out while you're going through your fouls and verify what's on there, he, he gets frustrated with that. Because we should be doing that. We should, we're good enough officials to take a minute, whether it's in timeout, change of possession, something to be able to write those things down. And at every level, that'll help. Um, if you're a high school official looking to, to get better at fouls or in general, um, to figure out where to go find it in the game film if you're lucky enough to have it, 
writing it down makes a huge difference. So even at the high school level, learning to take that minute, write things down so that you can come back to way, the way you saw it and jog your memory will help you with your write-ups. Um, some cardinal sins for me uh, as a grader, and I've heard this from a lot, um, chief among them is leaving your file description blank. Um, not at the high levels, um, I, I'm quite certain they don't let you do that. Um, at, at our level for the, for the GPAC, if I see that at minimum, I'm gonna give you an incorrect mechanic because you need to be writing your file descriptions. Um, at some point, and I will only do that for one of your, however many you left blank. Um, but the other piece is now you're just leaving me at, at the mercy of the film. And as I said, it's not good enough for me to be able to say, hey, this is how it should look. <clears throat> um, you uh, you leave me guessing. So maybe if you'd written it up, there's a sp space that I can't see. And I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't quite show up on film, but it makes sense by the way you wrote it up. You, you completely take that out of the equation if you don't write anything in your file description. Um, so you're leaving me at, at the mercy. And as it comes, as I, we sometimes tell coach, coaches, coaches, if you're going to make me guess, I'm probably going to guess wrong and you're not going to like the outcome. So make sure you write that things down, those things down. Um, similar to that is not if you wave off a flag, um, the same thing needs to happen. Um, in some cases, it's because, you know, uh, Nick and I had a conversation on the field. He saw us one thing I see the other um, I, I write that I wrote uh, through for a whole offensive hold he takes me off of it now I get the no grade uh, be more patient and Nick gets the correct judgment good job pulling him off of this all those things need to go in or in some cases it's delay a game and like why didn't we mark, mark off five yards oh we had the time out ahead of time so make sure that you're writing everything that happened in the game because as you'll see when you go into the game film flags catch your attention and the, the sometimes what we hear about that is, you know, if the flag's catching your attention, that's guaranteed I'm going to look at it as a grader. So if you have thrown your flag for any reason at all, even if you pick it up, make sure it goes in there. Um, <clears throat> similar idea, we have a lot of weird things that happen in football that don't have a flag associated with them. So comments and specials are very good if you use them properly. Um, <clears throat> in most cases, it, it's something as simple, simple as a down by contact that it looks a little weird and you're like, I, I need to tell them what I saw. Um, in other cases, generally this is gonna be in your fourth quarter. I mean, don't be saying I passed due to time and score with 10 minutes in the second quarter and it's already 35 to nothing, not good enough. <laughs> we wanna see that in the fourth quarter, teams losing by 60 and they have what is probably a hold, but there's five minutes left in the game and you don't wanna pile on. Telling me that you passed on that will get you a good job, nice work. Um, that's, that's a good game management piece. Um, <clears throat> I touched on tight rulings on, uh, on down by contact. Uh, I also touched on catch, uh, or I also can say on catch, no catch. Say you have conflicting signals from two, two officials. You come together, you talk about it. That might be something else to put in there. What's going to catch my attention as a grader? What, are you, what do you think I'm going get, to get in there? Um, this is, there's hit or miss as to whether or not you should be putting in fouls that you passed on. That's really up to you and your conference. Um, there's also conflicting philosophies on that. Ultimately do what your boss wants. Um, we are not ones that necessarily put in fouls that we were 50-50 on and choose to pass. I might reach out to the grader if I know the coach um, might be sending that play in. I was like, hey, to the boss, to the grader, hey, this is a play that I know happened. Um, I'm not gonna put it in foul just in the in the quick ref and force you to grade it, but just know that if it comes up, I did see it. Um, in some cases, if you have that, like especially at my level, if you put in a put in that, I will not give you a downgrade. I won't give you an IC or, an, or an, a marginal or a no call. I'll just no grade it because I want you to learn from that. You you have asked me to give you feedback again as the learning moment, so we can use those no grade remarks in that set set, uh, set of things. Okay, I've talked for 10, 15 minutes already. Um, I want to get into the actual video portion of this, but before I do, or is there, are there any questions at all um, from the things that I've covered to this point? Brian, I have a question for you. Okay. So because you're a white hat and you're also a grader, mm -hmm. when you're working white hat and you you make a mistake or maybe you make a ruling that 
you know, you shouldn't have. How do you feel about um, specials versus let it go and, and see what happens? Um, so you're like, so you're saying let, uh, maybe I, uh, well, I'll use a game, game, man, a game piece. Um, maybe Tark can let weigh in on this. Um, we errantly, um, tacked on an illegal substitution on a punt. So we had, um, a, uh, 12, 12 in formation, um, didn't get off the field, never even made an attempt to get off the field, fair catch it's fourth and seven. So that's important too. We didn't have a chance to just you know, get a first down and it was a good enough punt with a fair catch that we, we tacked it on. So we, went, we backed them up five yards from the spot of the fair catch. We did it wrong. Um, I would not necessarily bring that in there unless you're going to fall on your sword. Me personally, if you know, you did it and you're like, Hey, I overruled somebody. If so, if I'm the referee and someone's and someone comes to me, Tart comes to me and says, Hey, Brian, we can't do that. Um, for me personally, I want to be, be able to make sure that the boss knows Mike tried and um, I overruled him. Like that's where I would say a special is good. Um, if you come back to something and you're like 10 plays in um, and you come back and you go, man, maybe that wasn't so right. I wouldn't put that one in. Like if you're going to have a conversation on the field and one side says one thing and one says the other, that's about the only time where I would put in a special for that. Um, but that's me personally uh, as a referee and as a greater that's where I would be. Otherwise, like I said, you're drawing attention to something that you may or may not want attention to. Not every grader is going to catch it. I'll talk about that um, when we get to the film time. Not every grader watches every, every piece of film. Um, for me, I will watch every, every single play. And one of the things I'm going to do is when I see a flag, I'm going to go make sure we enforce it properly. Um, I downgraded the whole crew because they had, uh, same as, same as I, I shame on me because I, I downgraded the group on a punt for, uh, attacking on running into the kicker to the end of the kick. And then the next week I did the same thing and we did, did it wrong for us and our crew. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that I rambled a little bit, but hopefully that answered your question, uh, from that side. Did it, did it, Kenny? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to pull up Huddle. Um, give me a second uh, while we have that. I'm clicking through everything. Sorry. All right. Hearing none, I'm going to switch my share. Everybody see my huddle screen now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Once so um, again, what I'm looking for is uh, is a specific play. Specific set. So uh, again, bear with me just a second. I actually want the whole screen. So part of what I'm going to do is going to be based on the file descriptions from the GPAC. So we have two, team, two GPAC teams. We have a lot of files in here. Um, and what we'll also do as part of this is I want to make sure that uh, as we go through it, um, we have a chance to talk through these file descriptions as well. Um, so if you have a question about what does that file description mean or anything else, um, I want to make sure we get through that. Um, let's see here. It's this one. Yep, this is the play. Okay. So um, I'm going to start from the very first play and I'll go to kind of show exactly what I'm looking for when I grade. Um, I'm one of those graders that I will watch it and fast forward because I learned this from another grader. Like if nothing catches my eye on fast forward, then it's probably not worth me looking at. So on a play like that, I will have watched it, but touchbacks are boring. This one has enough movement that I will probably come back and look at it. So first, it's only the second play of the game. Defense is moving. There's a lot going on. I see them move. I'm like, are they on the neutral zone? Are they not? Um, we don't have a flag. So I'm, I'm assuming there's no forward movement, but if they're lined up that tight and they move 
And this is something I, I learned uh, or heard through the wall of the line and scrimmage guys from the clinic this last weekend. If they're lined up that tight, and in this case, like the defensive tackle, and he, and he farts, he's offside if he even moves a little bit forward. Um, know what your graders want, but I, I, I'm sure some line of scrimmage people might disagree with me, but we miss far too many DOFs because we're trying to be too technical. Um, if they move forward and they're that tight on the ball, the general philosophy in our league is then we want to make that offside. Um, I don't think I put that. I did. Um, and in some cases, like talking about DOF not called. So I put that in later. Um, it's not this play, but I will mark that. Um, and it's because we don't have a down the line view. I'm not, I may or may not downgrade you, but I'm absolutely going to make sure that you know that I saw it. And I want you to be able to think about that philosophically moving on. So again, like kind of just looking at it, film the film, I'm watching the, the high speed. Okay, nothing jumps out at me. I'm going through. Okay, yeah, guys hit the ground, but that looks like an overpower. It's a double team. Okay, that's that's not, not worth my time. Uh, and this really just is, this is how I go about it. So big things like this, I'll, I'll watch. This might get my attention for that last kind of second defender coming in. Um, and as you're going through this, not just for me, so like, like there, if that didn't catch your attention here, that defender coming in late, I think his crown arguably hits the defender, the other defender. He's coming in there just late enough that it's going to, I see him, he's wrapped up. What's he doing? Okay. Probably not enough for targeting, but it's at least made my radar. Uh, and this is where I'm going to take a stop, stop and, and think a second. Um, anytime you are going through this with your crew, I have a basic expectation for my crew that we are going to be harder on ourselves than any grader can possibly be. We are intimately aware of, of what happened in this game. We know what we passed on. And so when it comes to review time, my expectation is that absolutely every one of us is taking the time to go into our Google Docs, which is just a simple spreadsheet. Everyone has their column to provide comments. And it could be something as simple as on this play with how it happened. This is a seven man crew, but in an, if it was eight man here, I would say referee, center judge, and even headlinesman in this case, what do we think about that um, player coming in late? Did you see this? Did it, did it catch your attention? Um, so you can start that conversation. Focusing less on the, is this the right call? Is this the wrong call? But finding plays like this where you go, ooh, I didn't know that happened. So as a back judge, as an umpire, as a, as a line judge, you didn't see this on the field, but it catches your attention as, uh, as you're doing film review. You should start that question. Um, if you are the referee, the, head, the uh, headline judge, or the center judge in a play like this, and you're trying to hide, you're doing it wrong. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're doing your crew a disservice because all you're doing is trying to go for the grade. Um, make sure that you're taking the time to be as hard on yourself as you can be. So again, I'll get off my soapbox for a little bit, um, and we'll get to play seven or play five because that's where the first foul happens as I recall. Yep. So I'm going to take a pause a second. I'm going to show you the game review. And this is my comment. So we're not going to try to ignore that piece. Um, so I'll help by zooming in. That way you can't see it. So after the quarterback released the pass, number 99 lifted and used his weight to punish the passer during the tackle. Okay. You put yourself in the, in the shoes of the grader. You're in my shoes. You know the referee called it. You saw the flag. You saw the play. Now you read the foul description. This is at least how I do it. I want to go through the whole game and see if it jumps out at me. If you threw your flag and I didn't notice it, maybe that's uh, not as big a foul as we want. But looking at this play, it's pretty obvious. After quarterback, so I'm going to bring it back up, and uh, I will allow people to vote. Um, just kind of a show of hands thumbs up, however you want to do it. Um, I just want to get a basic idea of what do you think on this particular play? Um, I'll run it full speed and I know it's tough because we're streaming, but then I will go slow, slow after this.
Okay, so slowing it down, which is a little unfair. All right. I will take a, a volunteer or any number of volunteers. What do we think on this roughing the passer grade? How would you grade this? Um, I'll take a shot at it, Brian. I would probably give that an incorrect call. I don't, I don't think the second action raise, rises enough to be roughing the passer from from the film um you know yeah he does kind of pick up his legs but he hits him on time um and it's um it's just a tackle i don't think there's it i don't i mean he falls on the bottom half of his body and then kind of like goes to the rest of his body as like slides up in just a normal I, I think this is um incorrect okay <clears throat> and you're a referee richard so i'd expect the uh, same to you to have a pretty good opinion do we have any other referees that want to chime in and i'll show you what i did yeah this is steve anderson uh I would say it's right on the borderline. Uh, it's early in the game. Like you can send a message here and go with go with the ref and the passer. He, there is the lift there, and then he pretty much drives him into the ground and lands right on top of him. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that I looked at this one a lot of times before I actually graded it, um, and this is unfortunately for all you other positions. Uh, you don't get quite the leniency that we do with quarterbacks. Uh, I, eventually, I graded this as correct. Um, I can kind of see where it came from. I don't like putting marginals if I can help it. Um, having heard what Greg Burks had to say um, about any mar like how we grade, or at least how he wants it graded in the Big 12, um, obviously incorrect is just flat out there's nothing there. I think this is more on the marginal for me. Um, is it technically correct? Yeah, technically he picks him up a little bit, kind of uses his weight. I think you're better served saying, eh, all right, we're close. I, like I said, I went with a correct call. I don't, want to, I don't want any referee getting into the habit of not protecting our quarterback, which is why I ultimately went with the correct call. Um, if you, I will err on the side of correct of correct calls on the roughing the passer. So sorry, you other positions, you don't get that kind of leniency because you are not dealing with what is arguably the most important person on the field. Um, so I did. The other piece that no one else talked about, and I will harp on every day as a grader, is what we did with our flag. And the, the referee drops it right in the quarterback's lap. There's absolutely no reason to do that. <laughs> Um, so not just looking at the grade, um, and this is the other piece when you get into your self-evaluation and your crew evaluation, don't get, just get stuck on what the foul was and if it's right or wrong, take it to the next level. Where did your flag go? Did you put it in the lap of the quarterback or did you throw it into an area that, um, no one was in because you knew like, this is a, this is getting tacked on where there's no spot part of this. So all I had to do was either throw it in the air like a line of scrimmage guy does for a dead ball or put it over here on the 25. There's literally no reason to throw this on top of the quarterback and let the quarterback know, hey, I have a foul for that. Like it's it's in like I don't want to say what it might have hit, but I don't want to have that in my conscience as a referee. So, again, a learning moment from that piece. We want to we want to be cognizant of those of that part um so anyway that's that side I, i'm going to skip ahead a little bit and kind of keep going because i because there's there's plenty of plays i can do this and i can get really deep into things if i don't watch myself too much so play 21 is another one that catches my attention um we see the guy move at this point i've had two times where the def defense has moved and it catches my attention. He stays back. Um, 
but it's something that like, okay, well, let's, uh, oh no, this is a different one, sorry. What did I say this one was? Flight, flight 21. This is a pass, no pass. So we have a lot going on on this play. So anytime I see smoke, if you're going to replay people, this is smoke to me, I'm probably going to have a grade on it. And I'm going to talk about who saw what. Um, and in this case, it kind of looks to me like the line judge is coming to say he's down. And so that is enough for me to go, I need to take a look at this, what's happening. And looking at the next play, it looks like we ended up going with incomplete. So we're on the seven on this, this play, we're on the seven here. So I'm going to mark that up just like I did and say, what did you see on this play? Again, not focusing on were you right, were you wrong, especially with the film that we have. Um, this is an okay look at it. Um, probably better than we're going to get on a lot of things, but this is enough like is his butt down yet? Is his butt down yet? He's at least trying to throw it. I could argue that he's down. It looks like his calf is hitting the ground. Probably his knee is on the ground already. Um, if we have replay guys in the room, I would ask, you know, is this indisputable? Probably. But at this level, since we don't have it, what I'm going to ask is, you know, what did you see on this play? What was the conversation? Um, because I have the luxury of doing this in my armchair quarterback side of things. Um, so I want the line judge and, and uh, referee to have a conversation. Um, I would also argue that since the line judge is in there, there is no reason as a referee that we should be over overruling this. Um, so uh, I, that's a piece piece where, um, ah, thanks, Nick. I'll do that next time. Um, I would also argue that, uh, like, I'll, I'd like this. This is a conversation piece for the, so again, learning. This is what I would expect in my crew. If we had this in our play, um, line judges, uh, line of scrimmage people, what are you looking on this play? How would this conversation go with me as a referee? I mean, from my perspective, if, if, I'm, if I'm sure he's down, I'm going to come tell you he's down. If I'm not sure I have any doubt, I'm going to defer to you. Okay. Ryan, if you go back to the press box, we're snapping at the seven, so we should be moving to the goal line snap. I can tell you that I'm probably – I'm hoping the referee is going to own this. Um, if they come to me deer in the headlights, I may have an opinion. Um, but my eyes are not going to be in the backfield uh, at the time the quarterback's throwing the ball. So at the snap, we're moving to the goal line, right? Mm -hmm. We'll probably have a uh, receiver. And I mean, heck, we may have ineligibles downfield. Um, so again, if the referee comes to me during the headlights, I may be able to bail them out. But I'm hoping you as a referee can own this with the quarterback. Yeah. Um... I would expect that, AJ. I, I would hope that I'm going to be able to own this. Uh, I also have the luxury of having a center judge that's going to help me on this. Um, that's going to have an even better angle than I do. And just to your point there too, like I'm not used to as a, as a referee um, and I never worked line of scrimmage, but one of the pieces that I like to do if I can, and I would have, if I, if I were to do this over again, I would have made a comment about the line judges uh, mechanics then like seven and in, what are you doing still standing there? Like those are pieces that you as 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 self graders at as uh, um, crewmates need to talk about. Hey, remember our mechanics are this. How would that change how this play looks for you? And then AJ says, as you point out, like maybe you come back, but odds are um, this is me all day, and I'm going to make a decision. And what I'm going to need from you, the other reason that this is tough, um, is I'm going to need help on did that ball get to the line of scrimmage or not. Mm. And, it's like he's out of the pocket. I know that, but he's clearly just dumping it. 
And now, and Brian, I mean, that's a Brian, that's a good point. I mean, yes, we're going to be on the goal line extended there, but we we as line judges should still have an opinion. Uh, we need to know where that ball landed. I mean, on this play, we're going to make that looks like on on this film, we're going to make that land um, beyond. It got back to the line of scrimmage. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Um, if that does not get back to the line of scrimmage, we're certainly going to move into you with, with the little sense of urgency there because there's no eligibles in the area. So mm -hmm. um, this could turn into grounding, but in terms of down and released with where we're snapped from, I'm hoping that, that you as a referee or, or center judge, if you have the luxury of working with a center judge can, can take that. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, and to the other piece I want to get out of this, when we're talking about grading and film and everything, that's the design of this kind of grading is to stimulate this kind of a conversation so that if you get a grade that you maybe don't agree with, or there's a comment in there, you should be coming back with your crew and saying, this is a play. This kind of play is one that I would hope to dissect to a very high level with your crew so we can make sure that if this happens again, we're in the right places and we know what to expect from each other. Um, you're roughing the passers. Yeah, I will deal with that my, myself as a referee. I don't want to bring that up in a crew call. This one I want to talk about is a crew call because we have these points where, hey, who's talking what, who's doing what, um, really important piece. So good discussion. I want to, let's go find another one. Um, this is my down the line view, 26. Again, looking at, so this is my fast forward style. Like that's enough movement that it catches my attention. It looks kind of like moving forward. Like, is he, is he not? Again, that's like, where did he start with this? Are we lined up tight on the ball? I can't tell from this film angle, but I'll tell you what. If you'd thrown a flag for an offside, I, I would support it because I can't, I don't have an angle. I, so again, looking at what jumps out at you, that's enough movement and, and everything. It's something to, to keep in mind as you're going through your game film, find something like that and go and replay it in your mind. Um, and I would, and my suggestion as a, re as a referee that deals with it in our league is if you're like, okay, it doesn't look like it was in, it's like, that's enough movement. I'm not going to fly spec. Um, let's make sure that they're either in or they're out. Um, let's find something a little more entertaining. Um, let's grade some, let's get the deep wings and uh, deeps involved. Let's talk pass interference. Um, so you've not seen the, seen the play. I don't remember what the play was. I probably should zoom in still further. So, you know, I didn't, <laughs> don't know if I gave them a correct call or not. Um, but we're on play 56. We have two different fouls on this play. We have at least one that I wrote in. And you can tell I did that because there's no, no comments from the officials there, um, as well as early contact not playing the ball. So let's go find 56. Um, the important piece, defender never looked back to the ball, made contact with the in intended receiver. To me, that's enough of an early contact, not playing the ball kind of description. This is succinct. It's to the point. I expect that defender never to look back. So you said that. I expect to not see his head turn ever. So at least that's my point, my point from this side. So play 56. Here we go. Okay, we'll watch it from this side, but I don't think it gives you anything. All right, so there's your play. I will take requests for where we should be looking or what you want to see next. So we'll start, start from here. Does anyone else see the ish that I graded? I hope. Yep. <laughs> like we've got very 
he's in motion he moves arguably i might we might have been able to get away with the running back being in like just getting into position but when he moves uh, i've got all leniencies out the window when if we can't call this basic stuff i gotta get it so i mean sometimes that's what you get you're gonna get that one so this should have been an offsetting foul so remember as we're looking now up at the top of the screen we now know where our foul is going to happen. We've watched it once. Remember the foul, foul description said never looked back, made contact without looking back. So I'm going to watch this. Where's his head? Where's his head? Where's his head? Okay, yeah, I can get that. He never turned his head around. Let's see what it looks like from this side. With just this free frame, freeze frame right here, I think uh, it's a pretty easy, correct call. He's trying to stop and come back for the ball. Easy enough. There we go. Mike Tart, I'm going to put you on the spot. What did I say about, I'm going to say pretty regularly to our field judge last year when it came to flag throwing. I'll be more specific. Obviously, you want to be patient to be slow with it. And then, uh, you know, right here, we're obviously going to have a spot. You know, we need a spot. Um, well, we might not need a spot. It's more than 15. But, you know, th this one's in the field of play, mm -hmm. this foul. Yeah. And so they, that so we – very well. I Like, we, we snapped this at uh, the 20 – Three, it looks like 22, 23, it looks like. But you're, so, yeah, we want biggest thing that we have harped on is be patient, 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 patient flag. Um, I would argue if you're, if the football hasn't hit, in the, hit the ground yet and you're all, already pulling your flag out, you're probably too fast. Take a second, process the play. And so, let's see how I uh, wrote this one up. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Richard. Also, um, something to, to talk about, uh, I know I, I talked with my deep wings about this, is I would probably like him wider at this yep. point, too. Like, probably closer to that yellow line than where he's at in this position, just to get a, just to, just to make it look better, you know, um, as far as the angle goes. I think he could, I think, he, I, I think right now he's right on top of it. Where if he step sets back three or four steps, he's he's got a much. I think it. I think it looks easier. Yeah, I think back here would be even better. Yeah, because you're right. I think you're gonna get too too close to this. It's gonna be hard to see. Maybe you even have to end up ruling on an inbounds out of bounds, and now you're way too close to it. Mm -hmm. So that's a great point. I would ask Brian. Uh, did you make a comment? For the back judge on this one and just ask you know what did you see i think honestly the back judge has the best angle at this um, I did. right into the field judge lap in this case i did not um this was enough easy enough for me like was it in, was it past interference it was pretty clear um yeah uh, i don't I, I don't want to encourage me to flags in this league either so um if I'd had a flag from the back judge, I would also give them a correct call and say, this is a point where, you know, looking, looking in the right spot, but I only graded the, uh, the H cause it was the, um, receiver on his side that, uh, went in motion and the white, white guy reset. Um, I guess I was being extra, extra nice that day, uh, because I only gave him a no grade. Um, again, looking at trying to find, um ways that we can you know help the learning be there um focusing less on the grade this was all about we needed to have that if if that's on our light league we don't get the no grade remarks we get we get a no call um might even make it a three it was bad enough um and sometimes again nice work when it came to me i was being extra nice that day good concentration correctly ruled clearly impedes the receiver to coming back and and he did eventually 
finish the play with an incomplete signal, want to reinforce that. Um, so all good points. And, and then kind of what, what I've seen, even with us breaking this down, we're going to be harsher um, when we have more people in the room um, talking about it. So running about that by your crew, your crew and, and uh, finding those other pieces um, would be in there. Um, <laughs> some kind, sometimes as a grader, you get things that you just can't have to go by your foul description. Again, shame on you if you don't put them in there. Questioning the integrity of an official after being warned multiple times to stop talking back. Play clip, clip not available. Well, I mean, if that's your foul description, I'm going to go with it. I, I don't know what he said. I don't need to know what he said. We don't need to put the foul words into our foul descriptions. But again, um, something in there. Um, I too also, I'll do this one last play and then I'll open it up for questions and kind of keep it up. Um, play 106, we have a couple of different things. Kind of to Mike's point, do I ever put in mechanics in there? Absolutely. One of the things as a as a grader that I'm going to challenge myself for this this year is to have at least one comment on mechanics. Again, thinking about the level where that I'm grading, it's a lot of first year college football officials putting mechanics in there in every grade that I have, every play, game I have anyway, I think is going to help the league get better. So I'm going to focus on that this year. Uh, but you'd have mechanics for your back judge and your umpire. Um, so we have a defensive hold takedown. Um, receiving player 41 performed a takedown during a foul after the, uh, after the scrimmage kick. Um, if we're looking at the ways, to, again, to kind of fix this, I wouldn't go with performed a takedown. Um, I'm kind of half expecting it to be a you know, wrestling move from that side. Um, just player receiver 41 took down defender during the, after the kick, something as simple as that. The play 106 will be the last one we break down and then I'll open it up for any last questions. Okay, so did everybody see where the, see the foul where we had our flag at least. So kind of looks like he's out, out of the corner of his eye right now. I would argue as umpires, if you're focused here, whether it's seven or eight man, you're looking in the wrong spot. Kind of looks like to, to my way, when I'm looking at your bill or your hat, that looks like you're looking at the shield and that is either referee or, um, or center judge or in seven man mechanics, it's going to be your one of your line of scrimmage officials is going to help with that shield. Um, so know what you're looking at. If you are ever seeing something out of the corner of your eye and you don't know, don't guess, don't flag it. Um, just to, uh, one of those things we've, we hear so many times, but sometimes forget. Um, so transitions to it. This looks like a pretty good snatch down from my angle on this side. I'll, we'll go look at it the other side, but he pulls, pulls him straight down. This is, this one isn't enough. The second, second defender, this looks like an overpower 24 gets overpowered. This is a takedown and it's good concentration that we got that. I can't expect any other position on the field to get this get this um, this hold. So umpires, this is one. Know when your referees are going to take off. So again, thinking about how are you breaking this film down, not just as and especially as a grader, what would I be in this situation? So the way we do it in our league, referee is here, umpire is here, and center judge is here on the initial snap. And so a right away takedown, um, this is not enough right away for me as a referee to have stayed with it. I am now, especially in seven, transitioning to the shield, looking for leaping. That you as umpire need to understand that when your center releases and has nobody to deal with, find the threat. 
So I would say this umpire does a great job finding the threat and getting there and saying, yep, that's a foul. Um, ruling on it, I would uh, have to go back and look at the foul description to see if he said it was during the kick or after the kick, but this is pretty clearly during the kick. Ultimately, it's going to be the same enforcement. You're going to be the same enforcement as the end of the play because he just lands on it. But again, something is a grader you want to keep an eye out and look at. Talk about with your crew. You know, is this during the kick? Is this not during the kick? So get the hold from the other angle. Hard to see from this side, I think, because we're blocked out. Again, knowing where your film quality is. That's the one we're looking at. We can't see them anymore. So again, the other side is going to be, end up being our better view, but it gets finished off that much is clear. So it's all about your description that you're putting in there. I would like to see that as a snatch down as part of my foul description saying defender snatch down the defender. So yes, it's a takedown, but if you put snatch down, I'll, I'll understand a lot better and you are processing what you want. Um, and then again, I did grade our back judge over here for his mechanics. Um, any back judges want to make comments as to see what wants what I said about this? Or have any problems with where this was? No need for a beanbag. Okay. Beanbag definitely jumps out at me. I'm curious how like how deep are you usually, Mike? Let's get let's pretend like this is our crew. This is how we used to do it. Mike, where are you on this play? What's your positioning? Yeah, I actually really like the back judges. I think he works this play well from a positioning standpoint. Um, I'm not sure where the kick started. You go back and look at that, but sure, possibly depending on where the wind. Yeah, I mean, I think in our league, I mean, we're starting on the goal line, um, the deep threes for this one. But, uh, but no, I think the back judge works it well. If I was nitpicking, I would just say, you know, there's no need for that bean bag because we don't have illegal touching by K. Um, so I'm just going to come up and get the spot there at the end of the kick. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a windy day in Nebraska since that's where this was and that was blowing the other direction. So um, gave him the correct call for me. Uh, right where you should be looking, clear takedown. Was it potential second um, right next to it? Try not to throw your flag at players. I harp on that a lot. Find the space next to them, particularly in a foul where a spot won't matter because this is PSK enforcement. Um, so if I'm going to fly spec the, the, the um, description, I would say this is not after the scrimmage kick. This is during the scrimmage kick. And so, again, I would look at that next play if we had a return i would expect us to be enforcing that from the right the correct spot um and just to your point mike that's exactly what i pulled out looks like we beanbag the spot where our must the catch remember we only beanbag the end of the kick where he recovers it at the 18 um so little things you can pick up on i would hope that you can find something you know and that you can take away from this discussion um at the very least how you can talk about um where where you're looking on plays how you might dissect this as a crew um and then you know if you're a great get the chance to grade go ahead and take that opportunity uh, to to do that so um i'm right at about 50 minutes which is kind of where i wanted to be any questions for the group anything else that uh, that you want to bring up if you are a grader some things that i didn't cover that you think we should Brian, I think um, I, I'm not a grader, but uh, I, I think it's important as a crew that you look at your stuff. And I think you're right. Um, we need to be tougher on ourselves than the grader should be, um, especially when it comes to, you know, safety fouls, things of that nature. You know, they may give us a correct call because of whatever whatever the reason, but I, I think when we're always harder on ourselves than the graders than that, you know, that we should find more stuff because you're right. We, we know, we knew the temperature of the game and all of that. Um, 
So, uh, and maybe, you know, have your other guy look at your other guy and see what you say and have conversations with him. Like the, you know, the field judge grade the side judge or the side judge grade the field. I mean, you don't have to put it down in plays like this, but like have an ongoing conversation with each other. Um, I know when I was a line judge for uh, Purcell, me and him had a pretty much a running dialogue every week. Hey, look at play 72 about this. What, you know, what do you think? Um, so I think that's, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, again, if you're doing this to hide and trying to get just good grades, you're doing it wrong. You're going to, you're not making more mistakes than you do uh, correct calls. So being hard on yourself is incredibly important in my opinion. So um, take it seriously. Like that, that's what you should be doing. All right. Um, any other comments, questions? Trying to find my crew one grade. Just so that if anyone has that question, we can show you what we're thinking about. Um, if not, Nick, do you have anything else that you want to talk about before we let them go? First of all, Brian, I, I think I speak for everybody when I say thanks for, for stepping up and, and uh, presenting to the group. Uh, with that in mind, wanted to show everybody what we're looking at here for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Ken Cloud and, and Devin Aller will be taking care of the deep three kicking game on the, on the 25th. So two weeks from tonight, we'll get a link and stuff in the emails and the calendar invitations too. We've got stuff scheduled out through the end of May. I uh, hope to pick up a little bit in June, July, and August uh, as we get closer to the, especially as we get closer to the test, uh, start doing some some test, some quiz calls and stuff like that, uh, which we kind of I've kind of laid off here this time of year. I just I know everybody's kind of transitioning out of, you know, if you work basketball late, maybe you're still in that mindset. But as we're in spring games now, hopefully that's that's around. But I would encourage you if you're on this call, uh, if you want to present to the group, you know, find a topic and and don't be afraid to do it. Uh, we're always looking for people to share their expertise. So I think that's a great opportunity. But uh, that's all I've got. Um, and uh, thanks again, Brian. I appreciate everybody being on tonight. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weeks. Uh, we've got more football on, football on TV again this weekend. So get, get rolling again. So thanks, everybody. Have a great night.